I'm an engineer and I work for ComEd, an electric utility that serves the city of Chicago as well as four million customers in Northern Illinois. I work with a group of engineers. And the common thing that we share as engineers is this passion for technology and how technology can solve big problems. Our main responsibility is to keep uh, the grid safe and reliable. But we're always looking for what's next. What's the next big challenge that's facing this grid that we're responsible for? And as we think about it, we're really seeing issues about climate change, the impact of climate change, more severe and frequent weather that causes disastrous situations uh, for us, our customers. We're seeing issues around security, physical security, cybersecurity. And as engineers, we're starting to, we've been starting to think about how do we mitigate these impacts on the system that we're responsible for. One solution that we've thought about and we plan to do is a concept of microgrids. So I'll make it, try to make it simple. It's kind of high tech stuff, but simply what it is is you take the big grid and you redesign certain parts of it so that those parts that serve critical customers like hospitals, police facilities, emergency response people can, that need to respond in, in case of a big emergency can have access, can, can continue to operate while you're taking care of the rest of the big grid. So microgrid basically isolates those small parts of the grid so that really critical facilities and services can continue. That's really what it is. Our microgrid will include things like solar, it will include batteries to help serve that small s section that we wanna be able to isolate and keep running. And in our particular microgrid is gonna be located in Bronzeville. We're calling it the Bronzeville Community Microgrid. So as we started thinking and designing, we also started reaching out to the customers and the neighbors that lived in Bronzeville and to tell them about this great new technology that's coming and that would make their community more resilient. And as we started having dialogue with them, what they shared with us was these big issues that you're concerned about, we've been thinking about them as well. And we've been thinking about them in terms of how they impact us in our daily lives. And we've got all these big ideas too. So as this dialogue continued, what we realized was we had common issues and what we really were passionate about as engineers wasn't just about the technology, but how we, what we do the work that we do helps solve issues for the broader society. And I'll explain that to you. So we created this Bronzeville Community Advisory Council. And this is a group of local leaders who've been working on these big issues in the community who meet with us on a regular basis and we just ideate. We talk about issues around safety and security. What does that mean for you, ComEd? What does that mean for us? Can we work together on some solutions? And we started creating and ideating solutions and pilots that we're trying out throughout the neighborhood. Here's some examples. One issue that they brought to us was the concern about safety around schools, especially during the winter time. It's dark early and kids that are maybe doing after school programs, they wanted to, could we create a safe pathway for school students to be able to come in and out of school by lighting some, some areas? We came up with, hey, we'll put some, some lights in the pathways. But the unique thing about those lights are they're powered by wind and batteries. We're testing this out, right? Wind energy, batteries that are providing safe, secure pathways for students. Another example of a project we're working on, it's around mobility. As we were having these discussions, they're saying, well, one of the issues we have is we have a lot of residents who don't own cars. They rely on public transportation. And they're limited in that you go to the public transportation hub, whether it's the bus or the bus stop or, or the train station, and there's nothing to get you to where you really need to get to, to that store, to that doctor's office. You're walking a couple of miles. Could, how could we kind of think about that? Actually, some of the couple of the people in this council had already been thinking about this transit issue and proposed to us, hey, we've been wanting to maybe bring an automobile 
maybe an electric vehicle that would take people to places they need to go from these public transportation hubs or from their homes. So we started testing it out. We have this little electric vehicle. And it's parked at a senior citizen's home that has about 100 senior citizens. And it takes them to the doctor's office, to, to the local grocery store, to, to help them kind of free up, give, make them more mobile, to get things done that they need to get done. Now it's expanded into three senior citizens' homes in the neighborhood. And now, the uh, one thing I want to mention is that the um, owner of this vehicle is a small business person. And now we're looking at expanding that even more to a local university. The university students have different needs at the time of day needs than the, than, than, than the uh, senior citizen. So now he's building a business model uh, where he can pretty much almost have 24-hour operation for this vehicle. We're learning. And from the grid engineer's perspective, we're learning how electric vehicles impact the grid and, and how we manage that. A win-win for everyone. Another example of what we're doing is what was brought to us was you're doing great things, you've got great engineers. We need to build these future technology leaders out of our community as well. So we started bringing STEM programs into schools in the area. One great program that we've had going for two years now, it's called the Ideathon. What we do is we put a group of high school students, a couple of teams of high school students, with our engineers, and we give each team a chip. And we ask them to take that chip and develop a solution for a problem that they're seeing in the community. How could they use that chip to solve something? And then we have a year at the year end of the program, we have a shark tank where they sell those ideas to us. They've come up with some really interesting ideas. For example, put sensors in local parks so parents know whether the park's busy and they can see where their kids are from home. They've come up with ideas like put sensors in the poles in the alley so, the, so we, that can count the, how many rats are in the alley so the city knows when to come and spray for rats. <laughs> this is stuff that, right, that uh, for every day that they're learning, they're really being creative with these ideas, really some great ideas. So what's next? Really, what's next for us? We're taking, there's a lot more of these types of ideas and pilots that we're doing in Bronzeville in the city of Chicago. And together, this group of engineers, managers, local leaders, and students are ideating and co-creating and trying out new things to help solve problems or challenges that happen to be common to all of us that we didn't even realize. And we're really building this template out of this living lab that we're creating in Bronzeville. We're building a template that can be replicated elsewhere. And that's really what's exciting about it. We're showing how you can create these new partnerships and identify issues that are common to all of us. In that way, find new, brilliant ideas to solve them little by little by trying all these things out. We're really looking forward to continuing our journey and expanding it and sharing it with more people. Thank you.